All right, as you all know, I'm a car guy. I love yes. cars of all kinds. doesn't right. matter what kind of cars. Uh, of course, you're going to enjoy our next guest because that's all we're going to do is talk about cars. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> but it's also interesting, the business that he has built around cars. Yeah. Host Matt Farah of the Smoking Tire podcast and YouTube channel is here. Hi. All right, thanks so for having me. We are fil somewhat filtered here, not completely unfiltered okay. like you are. Right. I mean, tell me about the origins of your podcast. How did you decide to do that? So the podcast came following the YouTube, YouTube series. Channel. The YouTube series started first. Uh, we started that in 2009. It's called The Smoking the Tire. The Smoking Tire, yes, okay. yes. And the play on the smoking gun, really. <laughs> oh, there it is. Right and there. Uh, that's our YouTube channel right yeah. there and our website, thesmokingtire.com as well. Uh, we started that because we really thought at Wait the minute, time. Wait a minute, you have 920,000 subscribers? No, he has more than a million, right? Don't you? If What's you that? combine various platforms, it's more than a million. But Holy 920 on YouTube, how? yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, and we've done that slowly, incrementally, and organically over time. There's no secret. Make mm -hmm. more videos. Make content people want to make, and 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 eventually they'll find it. I want to talk about because a lot of people want to do this. I know mm -hmm. a lot of folks, guys and girls out there that love cars yeah. and think that they can just throw a camera in a car and yeah. do a review and get a million subscribers. But uh, you've been in this game a long time. So right. what does it take to be successful in this arena? I couldn't tell someone else how to do it. They'd have to figure out their own way. Yeah. But there's the the action it, it like the, it's simple but it's not easy right, <laughs> right. simple yeah. but not easy the concept is simple exactly right. the concept is simple like you said yeah. get a couple of cameras and a couple of cars <laughs> and go make videos right. Yeah. right i mean that literally is as simple as it gets right but it's not that easy no you have to figure out how to attract an audience figure out how to attract manufacturers or other people who are going to give you cars to film. Mm -hmm. You've had to figure out what you want an end product to look like and then how to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you're someone like me, a lot of people go, well, how do I do what you do? What they really mean is, how do I get press cars? How do I get, yeah, exactly. how do I get the, that's you know, the question. how do I get Ferrari to give me a car? That was the first question right. I asked you today right. when, so I said, the, when I met yeah, you. So the answer to that, step one of that is the least glamorous thing you can imagine. Learn Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah, learn I mean, how to edit. Seriously, you know, this, the, the answer to the glamorous question is often really unglamorous. Yeah. You know, learn, if you, if you see a video on the internet that you like, Think about what it took to make that video mm -hmm. and go home and learn every one of those skills. Right. Yeah. When I first started making videos, I liked the show called Top Gear. Oh, yeah. I love that the, show. The biggest car show of all time in the UK, right? With the original yeah. lineup. Yeah. And what me and a friend of mine did, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it didn't come to fruition, but what we did was we wanted to copy Top Gear in our own budget way. So we literally made a spreadsheet with timestamps from an episode of Top Gear, and it was like, <laughs> Zero seconds to three seconds, car sliding. Three seconds right. to five seconds. Shot for shot for shot wow. for shot for shot for shot for shot. The whole episode it was like a 20-page document by the end. And they'll go, okay, that's how you make Top Gear. Copy. Right. And so I think if someone wanted to start to learn how to make videos, if that was what they wanted to do, start making videos. Yeah. Learn, study what you like, yeah. copy, adjust. If you want to learn how to write, Find some writers who you like mm -hmm. and try and find your version of that voice. I mean, the thing about the internet that's so great is it democratizes everything, right? right? There's sure no is. more barrier. No one has to say, you get to be on TV and, and you, you don't. don't. Right. Everybody does, but equally. Kind of what so, we're doing here. So you find your own way. So tell me about the, the origins of your love for cars. How did it all start for you? Was it your dad or how did you do it? Uh, well, as a fat kid, uh, I couldn't run very fast, mm -hmm. and I could get into a go-kart or a car and be, be quite fast. And so it was around, it was a way around not being a great athlete, but it was also, um, I liked the feeling of speed, the feeling of going fast, and, and, I, and I think that when my dad started bringing me car magazines uh, when I was a little kid, the, the, the sexy shapes, you mm -hmm. know, of, of what was at the time cars of the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, the Lamborghini Countach, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm now fortunate enough to own one, uh, the DeLorean, which turned out not to be a great car, but to a five-year-old, the DeLorean awesome. is like, oh my <laughs> God, yeah. right. Right. Uh, and movies like The Cannonball Run right. and right. Back to the Future yeah. and, and stuff like that, and, and it really, uh, and my parents were, were kind enough to allow me to, to, to sort of nurture those things. Now, when you're doing this day in and day out, do you get, are you over, do you ever get a car that you show up, that shows up and you're like, I don't like this car? 
I don't um, want this car. <laughs> I don't want to drive this car. I don't want to shoot a video about this car. Uh, yes. I, good. Uh, no, not. Um, I'm very. Um, I think Thank most you. people would. Well, no, most people would say that I'm very fortunate that I've survived as long as I have in this business. <laughs> that I am now able to, for the most part, drive only the cars that I want to drive. Yeah. Now, sometimes those cars turn out to be disappointing, yeah. which is which is the way of the world. <laughs> it's not often. Uh -huh. Not often. Most cars are pretty decent now. But but every once in a while, I'm disappointed by something. But I do not have to. I'm not forced to drive anything right. I don't want to drive. No, that's the good news. So but I've been this, disappointed before. For okay. Sure. So is this full time for you? Are oh, you yeah. Are you a paramedic or something on the side? <laughs> well, I've, I've got my. We talked about it off camera. I'm opening West Side Collector Car Storage, which is my 130 car indoor indoor collector car storage facility in Playa Vista. So that's my wow. internet exit plan. <laughs> um, well, you're I've done been, making videos. Been working on that for four years, and we're almost. What's unique open. about it? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> it's the only build to suit collector car storage facility in Southern California. Cool. And we have a very, very cool, innovative quad stacker system that's the first of its kind anywhere. All right, we're going to talk more about that. And we're going to talk to Matt about his personal favorite cars to drive after we take a quick break.